Hi, I'm Mark from Line Momentum. So in this speed painting, I'm gonna go over in a few words what I'm doing here. So I normally start off my drawings with a background. Now I might not keep the background, it's just to put something between my oil and the canvas. Now of course, when I talk about oil, I'm talking about digital oil, because I'm drawing here on Corel Painter. So once I've got my background down, I start blocking everything out. I just put some color down on the paper using just the colors I think I'm gonna need. So what I've done here, this photo, I've taken a photo and I've put it through Lightroom to dole in down the colors a little bit to give me a different color scheme that I'm drawing with. So I'm not drawing from the same colors as the actual photo here. So that gives me a different perspective on how I want my colors to look. Now, when I do my portraits with whether it's pets or humans, I tend to use Smeary Round quite a lot. That's the brush I use in Crowell Painter. Now, this brush picks up the colors from below the uh, brush and it blurs them and blends them in. So it's a beautiful brush to draw with and to paint with. So I tend to use this brush more than anything. And in fact, this entire sketch was all done with mainly the Smeary Round. And the other brushes I did use, I ended up going over those brush strokes with the Smeary Round. So when I'm using this brush, I'm playing around with the opacity quite a lot. It's normally on 100%, but often I drop it down to 50% so I can pick up that paint below my brush in more detail. And the other setting I play around with is the reset because that takes away any paint off my brush. So I can also use it as a blender. So I don't really wanna see any brush strokes as such. So when I do see brush strokes, I might put them in to get the colors right and get the texture right but then I'll turn the reset down so I can blend them in. And I'm still just using the same brush for this. I'm not using a blender. Now as for colors, you can see on my palette over on the right there, I've blended some shades together. Now I'm just using my picker to pick out certain blends of the different browns I'm using to produce the hairs on this dog. Now going back to the brushes again, I do have some hair brushes and some fur brushes that I've made in Crowell Painter and they're all based on this smeary round oil brush but in this sketch I'm not using any of them and the brush is standard straight from the palette so I've not made any changes to this brush at all. So I always find the nose a bit tricky with dogs, it's trying to make it look shiny and make them look healthy so I do tend to uh, spend a lot of time doing the nose and keep going back over it to get the details correct. As you can see I'm just blending in with my uh, smeary round brush here I keep turning down the reset so I can blend in those shades and I keep going over it and if a part I'm not happy with I just keep going on top until I am happy with it. I don't stop or delete anything that I've done. I might hit the odd undo button from time to time if I put a line in the wrong place or I accidentally used the wrong color. But most of the time, if there's any mistakes on there, I'll just go in and go over the top of what I've done previously, like you would do on a real drawing. In fact, the way I approach digital art is exactly the same way as I do on canvas or paper. So I'm only using one layer here and I'm just drawing on top of that one layer constantly. I'm not using any tricks that come with digital art software. And that's one of the things I like about Crowd Painter because it really does give you the sense that you're drawing on the real mediums and not digital. And it looks that way when you finish your artwork. You can see the brush strokes and it looks a lot more organic than a normal digital painting that would normally use an airbrush. So this little lady here that I'm drawing is called Lucy. She's one of my friend's dogs and I've offered to do this commission for her. Now over on my website, linamentum.com, I have lots of different uh, artwork you can go and check out. But that website also contains a lot of courses. So I've started adding courses to that website, teaching how I get a likeness when I do a portrait. And at the moment, it's mostly focused on portraits of people, but I'm gonna start specializing in portraits of animals. So that's why I'm looking at doing more artwork for pets at the moment. And when I'm doing portraits on paper or canvas, I normally go for realism. So I spend a lot of time detailing each individual hair. But when I'm drawing digital, I find if I go for realism, it just looks like a photo with effects I've added on top. So I try to go for a more painterly look when I'm drawing in digital, as it gives a more art arty look rather than a perfect look, which when it's digital, perfection tends to look just like a doctored photograph and not actually like a piece of art. 
So that's one of the reasons I'm using a larger brush here as well. I'm not going in and drawing by the pixel to do the hairs. Adding some details here to the ear. You know, I'm starting off with very, very dark colors and then putting the light on top. Now with this particular brush, going back to the smeary round yet again, it blends in those light colors and makes them look transparent as I go over them. So I can gradually build up layers like this and it gives a 3D look as you add layers to fur. Now normally when I draw people portraits, I tend to draw every hair separately, but with animals I don't do that. That's why I tend to blend them all together. So by doing this, it gives me a bit more artistic freedom and we can still get the likeness perfect because of the sketch we do at the beginning. Now, if you're interested in how I sketch out at the beginning, because this video doesn't show that, pop over to my website. I've got a free course on there showing how to sketch out an eye, and it shows one of the techniques I use to get a perfect hit likeness when I'm sketching. I've also got another course, which is a paid course, and that goes into a lot more detail on that subject. I will pop the link down in the description to my course page and also the main homepage of my website, Linomentum. Now, I also sell portraits printed on stuff. So if you commission a portrait for me, you'll have the option to buy it on canvas, mugs, iPhone cases, a whole range of products. So if you pop over to my website, you'll see all that there. So excuse any mistakes in the uh, voiceover of this video. I often watch speed painting and I get annoyed to just listen to music. Sometimes I want to hear what the artist thinks and what he is doing. So that's why I'm rambling over this video. So this bit gave me a little bit of trouble. I go over this bit quite a few times around by the mouth. I'm trying to get the likeness right and show a few details of some hairs there, but I don't want to go too much detail and I have to draw each one individually. So I did have to go over this bit quite a few times, but it's not a problem. That's what art is about. It's about experimenting and seeing what works. So once the oil is on the canvas, digitally speaking, of course, that's when I start manipulating it around using the blender function with Corel Painter. And like I say, I'm just taking the paint off my paintbrush and using the same brush to do that blending. So once the color is on the canvas, then I manipulate it by using a blender. And I find this gives me a very realistic look because it picks up the underlying colors and blends them all in, just like it would do on a real oil painting. So all I'm using here is a Wacom Intuos. I haven't got a uh, screen tablet yet to draw on. I am planning on buying one very soon. So at the moment, I'm just using a flat tablet by looking at my computer screen while I'm drawing and I'm using Crow Painter. Now, Crow Painter is rather expensive and I was always put off by the price, but it's so powerful. So if you look on Humble Bundle, quite often they have last year's version of Crow Painter, very, very affordable, and that's how I got my version. So you can get it cheaper rather than going via their website to buy it. Corel Elements is also very good. I've used that for years as my main software. I also use Photoshop, Kitra, and sketchbook and even clip art studio so i do tend to use most digital software available i enjoy doing cartoons so i use clip studio for that i use sketchbook for sketching out ideas but my go-to software is always crowd painter because it feels so realistic and it feels like using normal mediums that i would do when i was learning to draw back on canvas and paper so I started my artistic journey years ago by using charcoal. Charcoal is my favorite medium, and I often recreate that with Crow Painter also. But recently I've been getting more into digital oils and I've really got more into using color. Of course, with charcoal, you're very limited to just black or white chalk and blending the two together to give you a shade of gray. So as I've come away from the face now and I'm moving on the rest of the body, now the photo reference I'm working from, this part of the photo is out of focus, which is perfect because it makes the face prominent in the picture. So I wanted to keep this out of focus look when I'm coming to draw the lower parts of the body to make the face the main dominant part. Now the same as photography, you always make sure the eyes are clearly in focus when drawing because this is the first part that the viewer looks at. And this is the same if you're taking a portrait of a person or an animal. You always focus on the eyes and allow the rest of the animal to go out of focus. And it gives that natural depth of field look and it contains all the focus on the animal's eyes. 
Now it's normally worth to walk away for a few hours from the portrait at this stage so you can see any mistakes. So you know when you come back into your portrait, you're looking with a fresh pair of eyes and you can see the areas that need your attention. So before I finish a portrait, I always leave it a few hours or maybe a day or two and come back to it and finish off the portrait in one quick session. It normally only takes me about another 30 minutes just to go over it and make any changes. So that's a portrait of Lucy drawn Crow Painter in just over 10 minutes. Now it actually took me five hours to draw this, so I've sped the video up 25 times so you can watch me draw this without getting too bored. So thank you for checking out this speed painting video. Now if you're interested in my work or want to look at some of my art courses, then head over to my website, linomentum.com, link below in the comments.